Triple E EDC back again with another knife video. Uh, as you guys probably saw already, I tried to post a uh, knife giveaway uh, update this tonight. Go ahead and take a look at that. Um, but uh, still going to pick a winner, just trying to wait for the common picker to work. Uh, in the meantime, Slicey Dicey put out a, uh, a call for people to do an open tag, I should say, for people to do a knife beauty pageant. Um, and uh, I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and do that uh, since I wasn't able to upload the uh, the giveaway video tonight. Uh, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at some knives that are just worth putting on some adult themed background music uh, in the words of Slicey Dicey. So first of all, we've got the Chris Reeve knives in my collection. One is the Incosi and Natural Micarta. Beautiful titanium, beautiful natural micarta. You know, the uh, Nixon marks on Chris Reeve's uh, titanium just always end up looking really good. Uh, and uh, you know, that's always a great, a great thing. He does also uh, very well with Damascus. I think he uses a lot of Chad Nichols Damascus. This is the latter Damascus, uh, and this is Macassar uh, wood, along with a polished titanium here. You can see the difference between the finish, uh, which is similar to uh, the Incosi's titanium, along with the polished titanium. You can see the difference there. The Damascus knives, uh, some of them come with the polished titanium on one side and a mix of the two on the other. Not quite sure why they do it, but it does uh, come out and look beautiful in the end. We have the, and before we go on, let me go ahead and give a shout out to Logues. Uh, he is a young viewer who has his own YouTube channel. He's got some mixed content uh, and uh, so some knife videos, some uh, other, other content as well. I believe he's starting to post more knife videos. Go ahead and, uh, you know, take a look at his, uh, uh, at his content and his channel. Um, and uh, uh, Logues, uh, go ahead and give you a shout out. His uh, channel, excuse me, I believe is spelled L-O-G with four Z's. L-O-G-Z-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z -Z. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the CKF uh, 520. Philip Georget design, limited run. Let's look at another knife that uh, doesn't make sense at first to follow the, C the CKF 520. This is the Berg Blades Iron Wolf. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, interestingly enough, they actually share some design uh, specifics or design aesthetics, one of which is the uh, the bolster versus the you know the rest of the scale. Uh, so you've got the titanium and micarta bolster here. And this is zirconium and carbon fiber. They also have similar back spacers, both of which I think are beautiful. You can see between the two. And I love the way it sort of shows you how the blade is centered, the back spacer. Go ahead and take a look at the Snacks Buster. This is the uh, Hoback Snacks Buster, not the custom. Um, and this, I just love the blade shape on this. The milling work on here is fantastic. I'm, I'm just blown away by it. You can see the milling on the clip, milling on the backspacer, even the lanyard hole. The milling on this is excellent. And the, I love this uh, monochromatic finish on here as well which you can also see in another knife that I really like the looks of, which is the Wii Knives Chimera. Uh, this also has that sort of monochromatic stone wash uh, look with titanium. Um, and uh, it also has some interesting millwork in the back spacer and the rest of the knife. Uh, interestingly, um, this now in the original review of this, it's one of the first uh, knife reviews I did, uh, I, I pointed out a couple of things and um, the individual aesthetics on here, really are kind of a crazy array of aesthetics that make no sense. Um, and, but, you know, the Wii logo is shouting like a Charlie Brown uh, episode. You got these, you know, Todd Begg-like holes here. You got, the, you know, claws, uh, um, you know, claw marks here at the bottom or whatever those are. Uh, you've got these, you know, this interesting floating backspacer here. You've got all the lines here um, and, you know, uh, followed on the clip with those lines. You got more Todd Begg holes. You got these little teeth over here uh, that look like gears almost. So, you know, all these things together with the fuller and the clip point blade makes for a weird knife. Um, but all together, they really work. It's sort of like, uh, um, 
like you know a really attractive uh, person who also happens to have multiple multiple personality disorder. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Uh, let's take actually take a break and look at three battle songs, all of which I think look pretty nice: the Hinder and Nieves, the BRS Alpha Beast Channel Beast, and the Benjamin. 87. So all of these have different, they're all titanium, all of them have different uh, blade shapes, Warncliffe, Bowie, uh, and this interesting, I'm not even sure what to call that, it's an interesting drop point with sort of a recurve. Um, they uh, all, all have latches, um, they all, uh, these two are channel uh, titanium, this is sandwich construction, um, but all of them, you know, just sort of have this really nice aesthetic. And this really gives you sort of the hinder aesthetic with the, uh, um, with the tabs here. All right, let's take a look at some Spyderco knives. So I never thought really Spyderco was, uh, a lot of Spydercos are, they're excellent knives. Let me start out by saying they're excellent knives, but they're not really the most attractive knives. They're sort of, um, you know, they, they grow on you after a while. They're an acquired taste um, and you can acquire them pretty quickly and they become very attractive after you've acquired the taste. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and put them up. They, uh, they do take some getting used to. One of them is the PM2. The PM2 on its own isn't really the most attractive knife right off the bat. Um, you know, kind of looks like a spy versus spy a little bit, you know, uh, on, the, on the blade shape. Um, uh, you know, or maybe a bird or something. Uh, and the handle sort of doesn't really go with it that well. Uh, maybe it looks a little bit more like spy versus spy with these scales on. But the, the reason this... Uh, is part of the beauty pageant, so to speak, is because of the lightning carbon striver, lightning strike carbon fiber scales that are on it, courtesy of uh, Shepherd Customs, Shepherd, Shepherd CC Customs. Um, I did not buy these directly from him. I got these uh, on the secondary market, but they are really nicely done, um, nicely contoured, and the lightning strike is very, very pretty. Another Spyderco is the Delica. The normal Delica does not look good at all to me. This still looks a little weird, um, a little spy versus, versus spy-ish. Um, but I think that as far as versions of the Delica go, this version, the uh, Freight Unlock Company version with the SUS 410 uh, and HAP 40 um, uh, with the carbon fiber, I think the carbon fiber sort of makes the knife here. Uh, the pattern on the carbon fiber makes it look a lot better than the FRN version. And one that I really do like uh, the aesthetics of as far as Spydercos go, this is the Spyderco Akuchi. I think it looks really, really nice. A knife I didn't think I would ever own. Uh, I did a review on it just recently. Go, go check it out. You'll see the reasons I like it uh, and why I've changed my mind on, you know, maybe not buying it at all to now this is something I carry quite often. and the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Now I'm including this because a lot of people love the way it looks. I think it just looks, just looks okay, but um, because uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and a lot of people love the way it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and include it anyway. This version though is uh, quite beat up, or at least the, the scales are. Uh, it's actually pretty new, it not been really used that much, but the, um, the scales themselves have seen uh, a lot of uh, wear in the pocket. A couple of Benchmades, the Benchmade Super Freak, the Benchmade 940 Smoky M Mountain Knife Works Edition, and the Benchmade 940 uh, 20th Anniversary Edition. Now, I just love the red and black, you know, uh, that these two have. Uh, the gray on here, the red accents here, the Smoke, smoky uh, standoff accents with the red here. I think look looks good. Some people would prefer to have a red, you know, standoffs here, but I actually like the smoke for Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, I like this a lot. I probably would have gone with a different color choice uh, than the red uh, here, but otherwise, um, but even with the red on here, I, I kind of like it. In fact, now that I see these both together, switching them it would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it?
Another Benchmade is the Anthem. This is an integral. I love the design here, incorporating the screws uh, for the change in how the axis lock works. Um, they had to change it because of the fact that this is uh, an integral and they can't you know, take it apart. Um, I like the you know, the, the chevron pattern on the scales, sort of divisive. Some people like it, some people don't. I actually really like it. And the, the uh, design on this is otherwise quite nice. You've got the, how about a slip joint? The GEC oil field jack. Beautiful knife. My car to the wrench. The nickel bolsters are starting to get patina from a leather pouch I have them in. Um, the uh, wax on top of the micarta is coming off, exposing some of the white and brown together, which I, I think makes this look really, really nice. Nice walk and talk on that. Shiragor of F95NL. Uh, I love the fact that this looks kind of futuristic with the um, almost finished, almost full uh, uh, flathead here. Uh, it's got the same here. You know, it has sort of that futuristic style milling over here. Uh, but it's blended with sort of a modern looking uh, inlay, which I kind of like. And the blade shape here is quite nice as well. You know, it's it's sort of the opposite of a, a Warncliffe because uh, the Warncliffe just has no belly. This is all belly. And it's just an interesting blade shape. Another knife that's new to my collection that I haven't really showed yet, the Grimsmo Norseman. Love the milling lines on here, the diamond pattern. Thin construction with the Grimsmo logo on the clip. That action is fully drop shot. Love the Grimsmo logo on the pivot, along with the hardware here. The hardware is really attractive. They mill it themselves there with the uh, Torx bit with the dimples around it. This is a limited run VDK Impaler. Beautiful anodization, compound grind, you know, double hollow ground with a uh, compound grind. Got this sort of rhino horn over here with the worn cliff. Um, it's just a beautiful blade. Also guillotine drop shot, just fully guillotine drop shot, which I really love. It's an integral as well. Got, you know, a nice uh, simple pattern on the back. Beautiful. Got the Wii Roxy 4. This is the prototype. I used to have both the prototype and the production version. Uh, in the end, I decided I, I just love the way the prototype looks. And I um, have so many knives that I, in order to keep things for the channel, it didn't really make sense for me to have two. So I went ahead and sold the production version, but I kept the prototype. Love, I love the, the Anna work on, on the, the flame uh, titanium work on this. Uh, more than I do on the on the production version. It, it's different than the production version, and uh, it really looks nice. Also, even the uh, Pivot logo is, or the Pivot itself is flame anodized, which is not true of the production version. Here is, let's go with a couple of hinderers. So this is the, Hinder XM18 Bowie. This is the vintage uh, version with the walnut scales, uh, textured walnut and O1 tool steel. Uh, the parkerized O1 tool steel. The parkerization really feels nice. It looks nice. It goes well with the uh, uh, with the uh, walnut scales here. Beautiful with the hardware. The green um, on the back of this, the titanium, the, the anodization on the titanium. This is the most beautiful color I've ever seen anodized. It, the, the camera does not do it justice. It looks beautiful in person. Like, I mean, just straight, like army green. Uh, you would expect like on like an ammo can, but, but just e even nicer color. Um, beautiful. The 
unfortunately, I lost one of the screws, as you can see. Uh, I tried contacting the ranch. I guess they're busy uh, dealing with some of the shutdowns from uh, that are going on in the world right now. I haven't heard back from them. Uh, it's been a couple of days. If any of you guys know where I can uh, find a uh, a screw that I don't wouldn't have to go through the ranch for that specifically goes for the the, the matches the set from the vintage uh, XM18s, uh, please shoot me a comment below. I'd love to know where I can get one. Um, uh, I'd love to order one. Thanks. Another XM18, the Skinner version with a Warthog scale, working finish. Love that Hinderer working finish. DLC looks great against the working finish. And it also looks great against that gray Warthog scale. Another Hinderer design, but it's a ZT. The this is a design based off the Hinder Eclipse. This is the uh, ZT0392. This is a limited edition uh, factory custom. And uh, this is the one with the purple uh, and Warncliffe blade. This is the exact knife that you guys saw on my channel uh, that I sold. The person who I sold it to went ahead and decided he needed some cash. So, oops, I hit the uh, camera. Uh, he, so he went ahead and uh, got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted it back. And I jumped at the chance, I said yes. Yes, I want it back, and so it is mine again, and I'm very happy to have it in the collection. The black on black looks great with the purple. And just, Hinderer is Warncliffe designs. Uh, in general, just are beautiful Warncliffs. And I've got the Hinderer XM18 Spanto. Uh, this is a Midnight Sun Industries titanium XM24 scale. I'm sorry, this is an XM24. I can't remember if I said XM18. This is an XM24. Uh, this has the um, working finish here. Actually, I think this is the uh, stone wash. This is the working finish. Difference between the stone wash and the working finish. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a beautiful, you know, beautiful knife. Uh, the design is great. The uh, and Midnight Sun Industries did a great job with this scale. So, let me see. I think that covers most of what I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, I don't... Well, actually, let me let me go ahead and, and do a bonus one. Um, I'm going to do... Actually, two of them as a bonus. One is, this, one is another slip joint. I'm sorry about that. I got a low battery notification. One of them is a slip joint. This is a um, JE made Zulu with a mammoth bone. This is beautiful. Great design. And it feels great in hand. And the last one will be a fixed blade. And as far as fixed blades go, this one's beautiful. This is a Bark River squad leader with burlet, midnight burlap micarta and mosaic pins. And you can just see the beautiful, beautiful on this. It's the Bravo squad leader. Real thick chunker of a, of a knife. If any of you guys are wondering how thick, um, let's take a look at the thin stock of a Benchmade bug out against that. Yeah, that thing's a big boy. Yeah, this is beautiful. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I know it's about a 20 minute show, um, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, this is sort of just the knives in my collection. It's not my entire collection, but it's the knives in my collection that I think are you know the most beautiful and ones that I wanted to show off. Um, you know, there is one more that I may as well put on since I just got it. The Benchmade Griptilian, the DLT trading version. Um, and uh, I just looked over and decided I need to throw it in because it does look good and it has these nice brass uh, colored standoffs. But thanks again for watching um, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in.